Welcome to the Foul Play YouTube channel. Open mic number 194. And as everyone is probably aware, we have um, a reply from the state about KZ's request for remand that we're going to uh, read out. It's very short. I'm not reading the all the exhibits, it's like 48 pages, I think, total, but the actual response is only eight pages. So we're going to take a look at that. We'll give everybody. Uh, couple minutes here to, to file in and um, so they can catch it all I've read through a little bit of it I didn't really have time to, to read a whole lot but you know it's Lisa Comfer so <laughs> I don't know if anyone has any thoughts about that but we've read stuff from her before and it's not been good so anyway I want to say hello to all my panel Rhonda how are you we just finished a live on your channel Jack, yeah, we did. Thank you all for helping and for all of you that could uh, drop in and listen. Thank you for being there. Absolutely. And then uh, Susan? Jack? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I know. Yep. How are you? Good. Good. I'm Good. doing just fine. Thank you. Good. Good. Dr. Sokman? Yes, uh, thank you, Jack61, and uh, welcome everyone on the panel and everyone in chat. It's great to be here. Uh, let's check out what the response is all about. Absolutely. Neverly from Neverly Hills. Hello, Jack. Hi, everybody on the panel and in the chat. Glad to be here. Looking forward to it, so let's just do it. Thank you, Neverly and Cherie. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Open Mic. Thank you, Sheree. Okay, um, I'm going to get this on, on stage here. So, um, Susan, do you feel like uh, doing the honors? Sure, Jeff. Are you going to read your copy? I just want to make sure yeah. I'm... Or, okay. Yeah. All right, I, I will scroll, but I just want to make sure. Okay. Well, you start whenever... You ready? Looks like we have, uh, yeah, we've got several in here, so let's get to it. Okay. <clears throat> Response opposing motion to stay appeal. The state of Wisconsin, by Assistant Attorney General Lisa E. F. Comfort, opposes Stephen A. Avery's motion to stay this appeal while he pursues new DNA testing of evidence pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 97407. Uh, what's the EF stand for? One. Exhibit. 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 Exhibit one. Thank you. Uh, a stay would be futile, and the motion is inappropriate. This court should deny it. The only issue for this court's review in this appeal is whether the circuit court properly denied, without holding an evidentiary hearing, Avery's third Wisconsin Statute 97406 motion, alleging that he had new witness testimony, either meeting the newly discovered evidence test or sufficient to show that the state violated Brady v. Maryland. The court does not have to hold an evidentiary hearing on a motion just because a party asked for one. That's from uh, State v. Allen, I think. <clears throat> this court's review on that question is limited to the record that was before the trial court when it made the decision being appealed under Donk v. Lamb and State v. Adderholt. That means the outcome of any new DNA testing Avery would like to perform would be completely irrelevant to this appeal. This court could not consider any such test result, quote, for use in determining, end quote, whether the circuit court properly denied Avery's Wisconsin Statute 97406 motion because no such results were presented to the trial court in that motion. Avery has not even attempted to explain how any new DNA evidence he develops now could be relevant to whether the circuit court properly denied his 97406 motion in which no DNA evidence was presented. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
<laughs> a stay and remand for Avery. Give me a second. Sure. A stay and remand for Avery to pursue a 97407 motion would also be inappropriate under this case's current procedural posture. A 97407 motion is an entirely separate action from a Wisconsin statute 97406 motion. See State v. Denny. Uh, it has its own set of procedural requirements and remedies and appeal from denial of such a motion may be taken, quote, as from a final judgment, end quote. 97407, remand under Wisconsin statute 808.075, five or six, is only appropriate when there is a need for additional proceedings on specific issues germane to the appeal. Whether Avery can meet the requirements for DNA testing under 97407 is not at all germane to whether the circuit court properly denied Avery's third 97406 motion as insufficiently pled to raise a viable Brady or newly discovered evidence claim based on purported new witness testimony. Avery's latest motion is really just an attempt to conflate a separate proceeding under 97407 with Avery's current proceeding under 97406 for the purposes of delay. This is not viable under Wisconsin law. A stay and remand is not necessary for Avery to raise any issues related to any DNA evidence and would unduly prong this proceeding. If a stay pending a 97407 motion were to be granted, this appeal would languish for years, regardless of whether the motion is successful. For example, if the circuit court denies the motion, either before or after DNA testing, undoubtedly Avery would seek to appeal that ruling creating a procedural morass if this appeal is still pending, considering that 97407 has its own post-conviction and appellate procedure requirements. 97407.2 and 13, on the other hand, oh, sorry, on the other hand, if the circuit court permits Avery to conduct new DNA testing, this appeal could not continue until that testing was completed, evaluated, and the 97407 motion finally determined. But to pursue additional claims not encompassed by 97407, for example, the constitutional claims already raised in his 97406 motion, Avery must meet either the newly discovered evidence test or show a sufficient reason why he could not have performed this testing prior to any of the rest of his voluminous post-conviction litigation. Otherwise, any arguments he could make about the results are, those two nasty words, procedurally huh. barred. State B. Escalana Naranjo. Assuming Avery could make either showing, a remand would be su superfluous. No new DNA test results could possibly affect the propriety of the circuit court's denial of Avery's third 97406 motion in which they were not presented, and any new non-97407 non claims somehow prompted by the test results could be raised in a fourth 97406 motion. Avery's remedy, if he is not prepared to proceed with the relevant issues on appeal, is to voluntarily dismiss the appeal. He may then file a 97407 motion and or a new 97406 motion after any testing he conducts is complete. 
basic procedure and fundamental fairness establish that a motion that has already been denied cannot be continuously supplemented in an attempt to repair flaws underlying it. From State v. Evans, obligated on other grounds by State uh, Coleman v. McCautry. The posture of this case presents a distinctly different scenario than when this court permitted remand. Sorry, one sec. So sorry about that. <clears throat> it's okay. The posture of this case presents a distinctly different scenario than when this court permitted remands in Avery's previous appeal to allow him to add claims for which he already had the evidence he wished to submit in hand. The present motion is an attempt to belatedly bolster his already denied motion with evidence that could have been sought earlier and isn't at all related to the issues raised in it. And it is based on pure speculation. Any new DNA evidence even exists. Successive and often reformulated claims, such as what Avery is attempting with this remand request, clog the court system and waste judicial resources. The state and the victims have a strong interest in the finality of criminal cases, which is why 97406 contains strict procedural requirements. Avery has ignored and attempted to cir circumvent Wisconsin's various procedural requirements every step of the way. He has repeatedly filed motions under the wrong procedure, along with improper attempted amendments and requests for remand for remands and supplementation after his litany of rushed motions containing half investigated factually unsupported claims are denied neither the state the victims the circuit court nor this court should have to countenance this behavior any longer particularly where the victim's interests against delay of the present appeal and in the finality of Avery's conviction are of constitutional dimension. Avery's appeal is from the denial of his third Wisconsin statute 97406 motion on the grounds that his claim that a new witness amounted to either newly discovered evidence or a Brady violation were insufficiently pled and refuted by the record. If he wants to pursue new DNA evidence under 97407, he may either dismiss his current appeal or wait until it is concluded and then follow the appropriate procedures for doing so. But nothing new he pursues now is relevant to his current appeal. His motion should be denied. Dated today, March 21, 2024. Well. <laughs> Comments? That. Doc, Doc, comments? Docker. Oh, well, just um just just very, very quickly. Uh if you were to distill that uh into just one sentence. It's basically Kathleen Zellner, please go away. Stephen Avery, please die in jail. Leave us alone. End the story. That's it. That's that. That's the a polite way of putting it. Uh, yeah, I, I think that you know personally, I think there is a correlation between the the two. Uh, you know her. Um, Appeal and this new motion for new DNA testing. I mean, it's about the RAV. There's definitely a correlation. And, and no doubt about that. Uh, Sucker was they want her now. Sorry, go ahead, Jeff. No, 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 go ahead. Mm -mm. 
No. I was just going to say, in Succoist Denial, she talks about the RAV at length and what was inside of it. And she didn't care. Go ahead, Susan. Yep, she did. Um, now I have a brain fart. <laughs> Anyone else? I think just dragging, what's dragging this out for years and years is the state withholding everything or, you know, most everything she asked for. And if they would hand over the RAV, let her test it, be done with it. Trying to accuse her of, of delaying the court? I mean, are they serious? Like, that's something she would want to do? Right. Does that make sense? I don't sense? think so. If they no, that's called a projection. Back everything, it's what I think. It's the same, you know, drop your appeal and file a new one. That's what they did the last time, right? That's right. Exactly right. Want her to drop her this third and, appeal? To see Escalona and Naranjo in there coming out of their lips. Yep. Three two or three times. It's usually barred. <sighs> yeah, you know, the procedures for scholars, I'm sure other states have it too, but uh, they're really convoluted. What was the name of that lawyer, Mike, Michael Cicioni? Is that his name, Doc? Uh, Ciccini. Yeah, Ciccini, I think. Yeah, he wrote, he's wrote a few books, and I've, I've read two of them, and he does a really good job of you know, going through Wisconsin law and distilling it down to where we, the non-layman, can understand it. it it's really convoluted. It, it's really convoluted. Well, when you get um, down to it, I think um, uh, if I could just read the comment by uh, Seamus Brady, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the gentleman says, I "Hate to say it, but KZ has left herself wide open by not following a proper procedure." And uh, in, in a way, um, I, I, I do agree. Um, if you're in Wisconsin. Uh, you've got to follow the appropriate procedures. You've got to do things in a highly specific way. Uh, otherwise, you're basically giving ammunition to the state to easily reject what you file. And yep. um, it was Tracy, I think, and also Sapakop, uh last uh, podcast we did, who essentially summarised it uh, as so. And uh, I, I believe that Tracy even predicted exactly what uh, the state was going to state uh, in regard to Kathleen Zona's uh, new filing. And that's exactly what they wrote back. Uh, it's pretty obvious to me um, that the language that they're using is very, very strong, very direct. Essentially, don't waste our time. Um, we want finality in this case. Uh, the victim's family uh, has to move on, et cetera, et cetera. This is just delaying the inevitable, and it's, to me, quite obvious that they're going to string Kathleen Zona uh, along until she files in the appropriate manner to the appropriate court and says all the right things. Otherwise, it'll be uh, continuously being kicked out. Yeah, it's a real quagmire. You know, and as I really thought about uh, when she filed the, this motion for new DNA testing, um, I didn't understand it at first, but then after reading Judge Willis's order, his final order, that certain things can be tested at any time. Now, it didn't, I don't think it specifically said the RAB, but there were other things mentioned. It specifically um, says only Stephen's blood. Yeah. In my, in my reading of it. Well, so I don't that. understand why she's using that because well, the, it is very specific. It is. Essentially what, um, if you read between the lines, they're basically stating that the RAV4 is forensically useless, as in 
all the material that's going to come out of the RAV has already been uh, swabbed by Kohane. The judge doesn't, be, or whoever wrote the response, doesn't believe that you're going to get any additional DNA from the RAV4, right? That's the impression I get. And hence, that's why there's a reluctance to hand over anything to Kathleen Zona and her experts to forensically re-examine the RAV. The impression I get is, hey, the RAV has been swabbed. We obtained the genetic information from the RAV4. It's got Stephen's blood, hence DNA. It's got Teresa's blood, saliva. That's it. Book is shut. You know, if you look at the final photos that I'm aware of that we've got, which were the FBI doing their laser scan in November of 2006, uh, the seats are out of it. At least the bottom parts of the front seats are out and other various things. Uh, I don't know what all they took out of it. You know, it just makes me wonder what does exist. I mean, what potentially could still be in there that they could detect with today's testing? Well, the the technologies that we've got today are extremely sensitive, right? As you know. Yeah. Yep. But the judge and obviously the state does not want to uh, open up Pandora's box, right? So if there are genomic DNA profiles within the RAV, their argument will be, well, you try and prove it that it's got related, it, that it is related to the murder of Teresa Horbach. So that that will be their argument. And the testing I see and the reason why it has to be tested is essentially to clear a Bobby Dassey, right? Because according to what Tom Sawinski witnessed, he saw an named Bobby Dassey and uh, Santa pushing the RAV4. So potentially they could have left forensic evidence in or on the, on the RAV4 itself. The uh, judge does not want Kathleen Zona to retest anything. Nothing. No. no. No, they don't want it touched. All right. Anyone else with uh, thoughts? I've just been kind of looking through the comments, and there, there are several. You know, this procedurally barred thing, it it really irks me because it's a, it's a technicality. The state's well aware of that. But they've used it uh, to great effect. Great because effect. She, yeah, because she dismissed the original 97406 instead of amending it way back in 2017, 2016, whenever the hell it came out. Set 2017, I guess. Instead of amending that motion and just adding whatever to it, everything could have been included and there would be no procedural bar. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's rather remarkable in a way, and uh, uh, under your scars uh, mention, and also to clear Brendan Dassey too, because according to the state, it was both Brendan and uh, Stephen that uh, drove the RAV4 to the pit area and left it there. So potentially his DNA should be in the RAV. Now, I find it rather remarkable that this is a great opportunity to nail Stephen. If his DNA is present on the seats, other locations of the RAV, the blinker light, the uh, number plates, um, Stephen has got no recourse. You you would have to, you, you cannot explain why his DNA is present uh, on those items. But the argument by the state is very simple. Well, we found his blood in the RAV4. We're happy with that. We found his touch DNA on the hood latch. We're happy with that. So that's the notion that they're going with, that they are satisfied from a forensic standpoint that no additional testing of the RAV4 is required. Do, do, do you get my drift, what the judge is proposing here? They don't want to hand over any item to Kathleen Zellner. No. Because look what happened when she tested item FL. Yes. That's just one item, right? Imagine a whole RAV4. Oh, boy. 
Well, it was one of the key items presented in court, you know, found this bullet with her DNA in his garage uh, somehow with nucleated cells. It was not much, obviously, but uh, no blood. But, you know, it's got some nucleated cells on it. Got him. Case closed. Bethany's got a good um, comment. She says, what's the point in keeping the rap for? and other forensic items for future testing and not allow it to be. I have a feeling they got rid of the RAV without notification to KZ. Well, it's the same <laughs> notion. It's the same notion about giving away the cremains. Yes. Um, it, it's the same thing, right? As soon as um, I think the uh, judge or whoever um, denied Kathleen Zona uh, almost immediately they gave away the cremains basically stating oh no well, that was that was that was Hagopian that was way back in two, yeah 2011 oh, yep and and so hence there is no um chance of forensically testing the cremains to actually right. prove they belong to Teresa Horbach or to right. another uh, third party um no or that, even if they were or even if they were human at all or yes even if they were human at all um, they want to basically shut this case down and they're going to do it legally. By legal Finality. Law. They said Finality. that twice in there. Uh, 100%. Yeah. And you could tell by the tone in which the response was written, hey, don't waste our time anymore. Yep. I heard three things. Procedurally barred is one, family or victim. Two, and three is finality. That's what I heard from all of this. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, you, you're correct. And that's exactly the same line that Brad Schimmel used on Brendan Dassey. Exactly the same type of uh, reasoning uh, that they want to shut down the case. They don't want to open Pandora's box. It's final. Just go away. Uh, and I'd like to respond to, to Nosy. She's asking about Brendan's lawyers. Why haven't they done anything with all of this information? And it's a good question. I, I really don't know what the answer to that is. Um, do you, anyone? I, I don't. I mean, I know that um, Drizzen left, um, he left that Northwestern, uh, whatever where he was at with uh, now writer but he's still university they're still yeah he's still a part of the case and i i don't know uh what steps if any that that they're taking it, it, they've not been public at all about it i i i, and I can't answer the question I, and i'd like to or i really I don't know, know. That they they do have <laughs> 97406 open to them um, yes they do and i think it's the only thing they have uh, that they could file with, as far as I know. Probably, but, Probably. but I'm a lawyer, I, so. I, I don't know. But but you see, this is, a, this is a bit of a dilemma, right? The state, I, I know exactly what the state's going to say. The state will say, well, if you don't find Brendan Dassey's DNA or anything pertaining to Brendan Dassey in the RAV4, their argument will be, well, Mm, that still doesn't mean that he didn't do it because the state's in a real bizarre situation. They actually don't have any forensic evidence tying Brendan Dassey to the trailer, to Teresa, and to the RAV4, and to the murder of Teresa Horbach. Yet that kid is going to potentially die in prison with no forensic evidence. So the argument will be, well... If you don't find anything of Brendan in the RAV4, well, so what? That's the type of argument that they will use. Mm -hmm. Or was it the absence of evidence? Isn't the evidence of absence? Uh, what they used on convicting a murderer. So okay. essentially their argument will be, well, okay, you didn't find the evidence, but that doesn't mean that it's not there somewhere. That, that's the line that they use. Yeah, it's, it's such an unwatchable um, 
I call it a, a, a docu series, but I lose I use that term loosely. You know, we're months away from the review, and I'm just someone have to pay me to rewatch that. It's to me, it's so bad. It is just terrible. And they had a real opportunity. Sean Rick had a real opportunity, and to me, just it just got completely blasted, and blew away, and overrode by well other parties that had other interesting goals anyway Kathleen will respond to this response I'm sure she will yeah and and to me it, I don't care what Josh or Lisa uh, wrote to me there is a direct correlation between the two there is because it's about the RAV yeah. <laughs> come on to say there's no direct correlation is ridiculous of course I, that's what we come to expect from uh, josh and lisa comfort they're going to go all the way around the other direction nope there's nothing over here she didn't ask for the rav to you know to wash it she asked for dna testing which is directly cor- correlated to what uh, judge angie put in her denial yeah i don't know at the end of the day, they're just protecting their verdict. I mean, yes, that. of course, they're not going to say, sure, here, do it. No, they have to protect their verdict. And that's as simple as they. My opinion. Yeah, it's no, no surprise to any of us, I'm sure. No. 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 I mean, at, at the end of the day, there unfortunately is a lot riding on these two cases. Because yes. not only do you have Stephen uh, in prison for life, you've also got Brendan Dassey, who went to yep. prison at the age of, what, 16, 17? 17. Uh, for, for Wisconsin, for the state of Wisconsin to admit wrongdoing uh, in both Brendan and Stephen, uh, it is cataclysmic because this case is so emotive People are so invested on both sides, on both sides, whether you believe that they're guilty or whether you believe that they're innocent. There are so many people invested in this case. Um, Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin, cannot afford a reversal or an exoneration of either of them because the implications, the implications, not only financial, but from a career damaging perspective, all the way from the attorneys to the juries uh, to the judges is phenomenal. Guys, do you understand? It is huge. Oh, it's yeah. it's a and it, it's a it's a political nuclear bomb. Yeah, Correct. it has and nothing to do with justice. No, 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 it's no, it's not. And they're also setting the precedent with these two cases. So they uh, cannot yes. do anything yes. to reverse this because imagine how many of prisoners who feel that they are wrongfully convicted would go after this and said, hey, you allowed Stephen and Brandon to do such and such, not to get technical because I can't. So it would be um, setting a precedent and they're not going to do that. Uh, correct. And you could... you. You also got a tasting of this um, with Judge Duffin. Remember Judge Duffin when he basically said, hey, look, this um, this testimony or confession by Brendan Dassey, um, it's fatally flawed. You need to toss it out. Remember what Mr. Kratz wrote in his book about Brendan Dassey and the interview that uh, King Kratz did where he basically was laughing and he said in his book, oh, are we going to have another person uh, calling up um, Making a Murderer, um, the filmmakers, uh, and what's Brendan going to do if he goes out and murders somebody else? Remember what he wrote in his chapter, right? And and that is a, that is a taste of what we can expect if Kathleen Zorner gets in front of a judge, Right. It's going to be very, it's going to be brutal, guys. Absolutely brutal. Yeah. I, I remember, you know, way back when um, Duffin, you know, gave his order 
running to be released within 90 days or, you know, they're going to have to um, retry him or whatever. He was due to be to come out. I, I do remember as that time went on, uh, emails from Kratz to Fallon about, you know, if you're going to have a mock trial, uh, I need to, I need to participate in that because me and, you know, me and Tom Fassbender, we, we know this, we know this, this, uh, case information. Mm-hmm. We, we need to be a part of it. I remember that well. He also said, you know, um, basically that he, he wasn't, um, how did he put it? I don't want to, I, I just paraphrasing that, but basically Brendan had, been had been sentenced for too long of a too long of a sentence basically in in those words yeah but the, he was also blaming the family for that never mind deflecting of their doing they put it all on the family oh sure oh yeah they were expecting brendan to take the plea and he didn't so yeah and he Kratz also said that you know that everybody let brendan be taken like a lamb to the slaughter. Correct. That's the expression. Mm-hmm. Yes, he said that. Yeah. The sacrificial lamb. Sacrificial yep. lamb. There that's, you go. That's right. And remember the videos yeah, that the were. The video. Yes, he even did the video. Well, you know, we have to thank him for providing that um, that video of, uh, of Stephen in, in the, the privacy room at Calumet County Beauty. Jail. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and. We had no idea that those rooms were had any kind of electronic equipment inside. They're not supposed to, but we found that out. So we have to thank him for that. I wonder what else got recorded in there. Anyway, Justine J asked a question. Is there a limit on how many times KZ can petition the court? Is there a time limit? Or can KZ continue petitioning forever? That's a good yes. question. As long as she has new evidence. She can bring as many 97406s as long as she has new evidence, is yeah. my understanding. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I think you're correct. As long as she has something new to present, like the, the, the Sawinski uh, affidavit and, of course, the, the Brady stuff, uh, I mean, to me, it's just that's cut and dry. They withheld the Vili CD. They hid it, uh, did everything in the world to keep that away from uh, string and beauty. So, okay. Any other comments? I did, you know, this is was intended to be a kind of a quick thing, a little discussion. I didn't want to keep everybody. It's a work night for a lot of people. Um, let's see. Best the, behind the magic says I'm very curious to see how uh, the Karen Reed case plays out. Due to the magic of technology, 18 years later, we, we may find out how far that that thin blue line stretches. Just saying, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting yep. case. That's, that's about police corruption. Possible. Yep. Possible yep. police corruption. Yep. Well, you know, that's been, I, I guess, I mean, there are other elements too, don't get me wrong. But, you know, for me personally, that's been... My biggest problems with the case is the investigation and, and how it was done. And I'm not talking about just law enforcement because there are other elements that go in with that. Minutes, and and that's... Um, I'll be ready in about um, 10 minutes to tell you about that. Sorry. That's okay. The, the way the investigation was done, and not only from the police, but from Wisconsin Crime Lab, and others. There are others involved too. That's been my biggest problem. There now, of course, there were things done at trial that I completely have problems. I real have real problems with. Yeah. Withholding of information from the defense is a real problem for me. It's not a level playing field, and that's what you're supposed to have. And the prosecutor is supposed to ensure that. And that didn't happen. I I don't care what you say. I don't care what anyone says. That did not happen. And some of the rulings by the judge. Um, yep. You know, all kinds of well, shady I mean, stuff. I mean, Willis did, you know, uh, do a few things that I, I thought were appropriate to shut down the state side. But by and large, he 
pretty much allowed the state to do what they wanted. And, you know, allowing in that deviation he, he, on Adam MFL that he clearly did not understand the implications of it. He just didn't. There's no way. Anyway. No. No, he didn't. And right. overruling the, the fact that somebody accessed her voicemail November 7th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a real that was a real weird situation. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just looking through here to see if I've missed. I've tried to catch any questions, but I don't see any more. Anyway, really appreciate any. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Any other comments, Rhonda? Anyone? Got anything to say before we jump out? I'm I good. Heard Casey's response. Yep. Uh, Jack 61, I just yeah. want to say that uh, I won't be able to do a reading with the crew uh, this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, my vision <laughs> has suffered um, and I'm due to see my ophthalmologist next week. Uh, it's very hard for me to read the slides. So, um, guys, we're going to have to uh, postpone it for about another week. Sorry, guys. That's okay, Doc. I'll I, I probably do an open mic on Saturday and continue with the dispatch calls. And then on Sunday, we're going to jump back into the depositions. So we'll, we'll do something. So appreciate all the efforts and all the work that you and Neverly put into, to doing those and getting those prepared. And you got to be able to see, and I know exactly what you mean about the, the blurry vision yeah. stuff. It's really, it's, it's not really, good. It, it's no, not, good. it's not, uh, uh, it's very difficult and frustrating. All righty. I want to thank, uh, oh, anybody else? Neverly? Susan? Anyone? I'm good, Jack. Yeah, I'm hungry too, just like I'm sure you are. <laughs> yep. All good over here. Thank you. All right. Yep. Yeah, thanks Alrighty. for jumping in, Jack. Putting us on yep, the record. You bet. On Foul yep, Play's absolutely. record. <laughs> absolutely. Yep, absolutely. All righty, we're going to jump out. I want to thank everyone in the live chat that's come, commented, and so forth. We'll see what Kathleen replies. Um, just a second here. i got to do one thing right quick before we jump. I'm sitting here running my mouth knowing I had to do this and didn't do it. It's going to look funny if I don't. Uh... Shows you how prepared I was. I, I, I rushed to get this one up. And didn't have everything quite prepared. But hopefully I do now. Yeah, I think we're good now. Just a second here. There we go. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Saturday, we'll plan for something. I'll get that posted uh, probably tonight. Um, we'll do a couple open mics, fill in the slot for Saturday night, and continue uh, with our uh, going through the, the, the dispatch calls. Um, and then Sunday, we'll jump back into the depositions. I, like I said before, I think we have four left, and I want to get those completed. That said, give us a like, share, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Until then, it's been a Foul Play production.